Good day, students. I hope you are doing well. For today's lesson, we're going to talk about the properties of static and kinetic friction. Today, the most essential learning competency is to differentiate the properties of static and kinetic friction. Force is a push or a pull exerted by the body on another. Forces can be classified as either contact or a non-contact force. Contact forces arise when there is a physical contact between the interacting bodies. For example, when you push on a door to open it, you exert a contact force on the door. Examples of contact forces also include an object at rest on a surface experiences a reaction force. For example, a book on a table. An object that is being stretched experiences also a tension force. For example, a cable holding a ceiling lamp. Tension refers to the force applied to an object through a cable, string, ropes, wires, and the like. Non-contact forces are forces that occur when bodies interact at a distance. Bodies that are not touching each other but their force field interact with each other. Electrical force, magnetic force, and gravitational force are examples of non-contact forces. So this is the list of the example of the contact and non-contact forces. Contact force include friction and the force exerted in lifting. Non-contact force examples are gravitational force, electrostatic force, and magnetic force. Friction is a force between two bodies that are in contact with each other. Friction, friction exists between different types of materials like solid and fluid. For solids, friction comes in different forms such as static, kinetic, and ro rolling friction. For fluid, it is called uh, fluid friction or drug friction. Fluid refers to liquid or gas materials. Friction depends on the nature of the surface that are in contact with each other and the normal force that is often related to the weight of the object that is in contact with the surface. The greater the weight of the object, the greater the amount of frictional force. Rough surfaces have greater frictional force compared to the small, smooth surfaces. In physics, normal force refers to the contact force that occurs when one object is touching another object. The normal force always makes a 90 degree angle with the surface or it is perpendicular. The stronger the normal force, the stronger the force due to friction. Frictional force can either be static or kinetic. Static friction is the friction between the surfaces of an object at rest. This is the amount of force one needs to overcome when setting an object that is at rest into motion. Kinetic friction is the resistance that a moving object meets as it slides or rolls on the surface. This is the amount of force one needs to supply in order to keep a moving object moving. Coefficient of static friction is defined as the ratio of the force required to move those sliding surfaces over each other and the force holding them together. It is dependent on the nature of the material. The coefficient of kinetic friction 
is denoted by the Greek letter mu with the subscript k. The coefficient of kinetic friction is generally less than the value of the coefficient of static friction. So this is, these are the formula for static and kinetic friction. The coefficient of friction is denoted by the Greek letter mu with the subscript of S. The force of static friction is mu sub S times the normal force of the body. While for kinetic friction, the coefficient of kinetic friction is denoted by the Greek letter mu but with the subscript of K. The force of kinetic friction is equal to mu sub K times the normal force of a body. It is expressed in Newton. To sum up, static friction occurs in cases wherein friction is sufficient to prevent motion between surfaces, while kinetic friction is present when there is a relative motion between the surfaces. The coefficient of kinetic friction is generally less than the value of the coefficient of the static friction. And lastly, sliding friction is always greater than the rolling friction. Thank you so much, everyone, and see you in our next lesson.